You've probably heard about the the dismal case of the proposed migrant asylum centre in Linton on Ouse. And if you looked at it too closely, you would have found it pretty depressing. It is depressing. But I want to say that um, the, the hope in that case is not necessarily that we're going to win that case. I think we may well lose. The indications are that uh, the people of Linton on Ouse will lose. But um, that the, the case itself and the attitudes of the people there, they, uh, that they show a really interesting drill down drill down as to why we will li- we will win now linton on ooze may well lose hands down but we eventually uh, all of us i think will win hands down and you can see the seeds of this you can get a little sort of cross section of this when you look at uh, uh, people's attitudes, the attitudes of the people in the campaign within Linton on Ouse. Specifically, if it just, just to summarise, because the, 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 the status attitudes of voting in a state democracy and that, adi- the, the, that attitude towards nationwide politics, that moribund, decaying, defunct approach that's um, really ruled by this biting uh, uh, social vanity, that, that that is going to go. That will go when the state authority breaks down, as I am, as I think it will. When the economy breaks down, then the state authority will break down. And then what we will be left with is how people behave when all they can do, they can't vote on what happens on the, uh, uh, at the other end of the country. They can only vote with their feet to choose what happens to them as individuals. And when people do that, people make really hard-headed, clear-eyed, rational, good, sound choices for the long run. And when that's all any of us can do, that's the only kind of choice any of us will be able to make. And as a result of that, I think we will all win hands down. And I think you can see that in the Linton on Ooze case. So once again, I think the salvation, the good news I bring to you, the good news I bring is the state system, the politics you see at the moment, is going to get worse. It will collapse. It will break down at some stage. And that the, you probably think that's when we're all done for. No, that's when we have won. And I think that's when we will start to win hands down. OK, let me let me get on and look at the case. There we are. The, this is a, a nice little summary. That's uh, migrant crisis, Linton on News, residents fury at Home Office Asylum Centre branding it. Uh, the wrong plan, wrong place. Officials were greeted by boo- with boos by opponents of the scheme, which will see a former RAF base where Prince William once trained become home for up to 1,500 asylum seekers. Wrong plan, wrong place. There you are. Um, angry protests aren't something you'd associate with the pretty North Yorkshire village of Linton on Ooze until now. Residents are frustrated and furious with the Home Office announcement that the former RAF base there will soon become an asylum reception centre for up to 1,500 people. Representatives from the Home Office came to the village, village this week. That was um, 21st of May. Hold on, uh, this week to attend a parish council meeting and face questions from residents. They were greeted with booze and chants of wrong plan, wrong place, the phrase that has become the campaign slogan for those opposed to the scheme. The village has a population of between six and 700 with just four buses a day passing through it. That's the basic outline. Um, th- uh, that are, that um, proposed site, it, it was an RAF base up until two years ago. Uh, it started in, as an RAF base in 1937. The RAF were going to sell it off. I reckon they would have sold it to a developer, made a bit of money. But the Home Office want to turn it into a reception centre, a place to hold and house um, migrants, asylum seekers, um, invaders. And and, uh, uh, because uh, and they've chosen that village because there are not many. Ex-military sites are really good for um, turning over into places they are used to housing fighting age young males. That's what a military site does. And so now, because all these migrants and these, these poor lamb uh, asylum seekers, they are all fighting age young males. So you can see how a fighting age young male set of barracks uh, uh, would be really good for turning into a place for accommodating fighting age young male um, invaders. Now, uh, so, so that that's the case um, as outlined by Sky News. Now, of course, uh, a, a lot of people don't like this. Let me go to that. And they've got up a local campaign. That's the Linton on Ooze Action Group. Wrong plan, wrong place. A very bland slogan. Uh, um, uh, I want to go through a little bit of this. Uh, Stop the Linton on Ooze Asylum, Asylum Centre. This is the main web page of the people opposing 
uh, this uh, the Home Office's plan for this 1500 uh, man uh, asylum centre. And the group has been set up with the primary objective of preventing the opening of the proposed Linton on Ooze Asylum Reception Centre on the basis that the Home Office has acted in a senseless and reckless manner when devising this policy, etc., etc. And uh, in doing so, the Home Office contravenes, contravenes all its own policies, guidelines to the detriment of all stakeholders, including v villagers, government agency, agencies, asylum seekers that were concerned for asylum seekers, how we like them and how we must treat them well and make the place more inviting for them. That seems to come up time and time again in this campaign and the environment. OK, and then um, what you have there, that's Kevin Holland rate letter for action for judicial review will be issued shortly. What I want to look at is the campaign itself, the concerns. Uh, village social impact will be outnumbered two to one. So nowhere do they talk about the dangers they face from the nature of the people that will be brought on site. They simply talk about numbers. So the impression that, that I get is if the numbers were cut down a bit or if something were done to uh, uh, um, ameliorate the effects of having so, uh, so many people as against such a, a small number of villagers, then it would be okay. Two to one, 1,500 asylum seekers in a village of under 700. The other figure I've heard is that it's 600. That would mean it's um, uh, two and a half to one. And then the RAF station fought for decades to uphold freedoms, which are now being trampled on, etc., etc. That's an appeal to history. Um, that's two points there. Village in infrastructure impact. That's another one they go on about. Uh, again, very, very foolishly, I think. Sewage utilities are already overstretched. Uh, when it goes to overcapacity, raw sewage is pumped into the into the use. Roads unsuitable, frequent flooding. Environmental impact. One point. Village economic impact. Two points. House prices. That's a bad time, in my experience. And I've dealt with a lot of similar campaigns to this. When you start arguing house prices, you have lost. You have indicated that you don't mind if you lose either. That is a really, that's the kiss of death when you argue that point. And then uh, Home Office consultation communication. The Home Office didn't abide by its own rules. Three bullet points. Planning issues, only two. The Home Office did not seek planning permission for change of use. That is the jugular. That is the throat you go for. That is the weak point. That is where you concentrate force. And uh, I'm not certain that is the point that uh, the village, villagers uh, are concentrating on at the moment. And then, oh, there's a big point, four bullet points here, far-right direct action. Neo-Nazi groups have been going door-to-door -door and conducting surveys. Well, I certainly haven't. They are holding unwelcome weekly protests in the village. Not me. These groups claim to speak for villagers. No, no one in that village has approached me and describe us uh, us terrified of asylum seekers, which we are not. Yeah, <laughs> not until they move in. You wait, you wait and see what, what happens. The site is not secure and we anticipate harassment of the asylum seekers <laughs> in future. Yeah, so these far right groups are going to be breaking in to that former RAF base, the asylum center and harassing um, harassing migrants. I think that's what they're saying. Again, they keep going on about how concerned they are to make things nice for the migrants. Then site inadequacies, oh, there won't be enough facilities, and how will the site accommodate 1,500? All of this, when you say that, you open the door for the Home Office to say, yes, you are quite right, absolutely. Thank you for making that point. We will provide more facilities on site, and then we will open this facility for the migrants. Thank you. Right, that's what, that's what they tend to say. Now, uh, taxpayer cost issues. These people are not concerned about taxpayer costs. Pretty Patel has already got up in the House of Commons and said, we're going to get a, a nice load of money from the EU to cover the costs. So um, that's a, a bad point. And Home Office not following its own guidelines. It, that they say that the accommodation should be urban, within reach of services, uh, appropriate, clean and safe, not a military lo location likely to re-traumatise, rapidly accessible uh, to e intensive multi-agency working, working by local authorities, police and health services. So um, that again on its own is, is not enough. It invites the Home Office simply to provide more facilities. You use points like that as um, um, evidence, as points to support your planning case, which I think is is you know, the weak point that you go for. And then finally, what do we have here? Concern for asylum seekers? Surely not. Yes, that. Look at all those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven points. That is far and away the, the judging by the number of bullet points. 
That is the largest concern that this campaign had. Those poor lambs, they're going to be living in a converted RAF base. It will be terrible. How can you do that? We don't mind having it out in our village. We think they're wonderful, but it breaks our heart to think they might have to live in a place where the RAF once flew planes. And if you look at some of these, some of these reasons, <laughs> I find them funny. There has been widespread criticism of the re-traumatization. Well, I never, that's a word I never thought I'd hear. Re-traumatization of asylum seekers accommodated military barracks yeah yeah I, maybe they got a, it looks like they got a journalist to write this uh, <laughs> there will continue to be low at altitude fly past of military aircraft which still utilize the airfield as a waypoint potential mental health impact of gunfire <laughs> immediately to, uh, ad immediately adjacent to the site shooting of game birds yeah so some toff goes out on the moor shooting grouse and that's going to send these these poor babies toddlers and, and frightened ladies who are not going to be attending that uh, housed in, in that site it's going to send them into a, a tailspin of mental health problems yeah I, I think that's unlikely and then potential mental health impact of the sound of bird scarers in adjacent fields have you ever heard of bird scare it is not something that scares you it doesn't even doesn't keep me awake when i hear it and just just so, because they know you haven't heard it they say sounds like gunshots no it doesn't no it doesn't sound it just sounds it just, it just sounds like a kind of a slight explosion really, isn't it? and it, well okay as they will be Finally, as they will be provided with full board, it is likely that the asylum seekers allowance will be the same £8 per week that is paid elsewhere. This makes it pointless, the asylum seekers heading for places like York for leisure. So we can't get rid of them to go into York and uh, run right, so they're going to have to run right here. So again, that's inviting the Home Office to say, yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that most helpful f suggestion. We will now give them 20 quid a week. And, uh, and then the centre opens. That's a consistent theme throughout this campaign. It is, you, you don't do that. I have run campaigns similar to this. You don't, you don't display weakness like that. What, the way you win a campaign like that is you send the dogs in, you grope around for the enemy's throat, and then you get your dogs to latch on to that throat. And the more your enemy fights back, the tighter you grip and you keep going, you turn their arguments against them. But you have to find the weak point, which every enemy has, and then you clamp hard on that and you just keep grinding away you do not you do not show weakness the way you deal with allegations of racism is you simply ignore them you don't even laugh at them so when they come to you saying you're you're a racist you say why on earth are you slinging abuse about nobody should believe a word that you say from now on i'm dealing with the relevant points and, and that's how you win you don't win um but by by showing your throat to the enemy and I think that is what is going on here and that brings me to uh, three points what well, three indicators uh, 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 still well, three things that indicate that I think this campaign will fail and that indicate that this uh, center is likely to open the the first one the first one let me just get rid of this uh, the, the first one is that uh, the residents are, are relying on other people to fight the battle for them. They're relying on the council. They're relying on the MP. No, you don't do that. You get the fight up yourself and you pursue it with aggression and hardness and stamina, particularly stamina, and you keep grinding away. And you will be surprised how big an enemy you can defeat that way. I win. That's how I do it. It is not. It is not easy, but it is simple and straightforward in principle. You don't do it by 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 begging people not to call you racist. You do not do it by by delegating the fight to someone else who doesn't share your incentives. That that's the first thing. Well, the second thing is that the people don't share your incentives. The people that are, I think this action group. Uh, want to do the fighting for them, that is the council and the MP, they don't have the raw, hardcore incentive to win. The council have an incentive um, to avoid problems. The, the, they have work-shy incentives, con incentives of convenience. The MP has the incentive to appear to be fighting tooth and nail for you, and that is different. And that, 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 uh, uh, 
Wanting that appearance is different from the motivation to, to win. Uh, and, and that is a problem. Now, the third thing is uh, what, I've just, what I just went through a, a few minutes ago, and that is the, uh, um, the concern and, and the, uh, the, 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 the weakness, the, the uh, poor fighting qualities that I think this campaign are showing by constantly saying they want asylum seekers, they want asylum seekers here, they want things to be more inviting, more welcoming for asylum seekers. They're teaming up with groups that want more migrants, more asylum seekers coming into this country. And by doing that, you are signalling to the, they're signalling to the Home Office that this thing is okay in principle. It's just a bit much and we don't really like it here. But well, where else can it go is what the Home Office will say, if that's what they say. And it invites the Home Office to say they will put in place measures to, to um, ameliorate those uh, um, th th those. Uh, um, th those bad, th the lack of infrastructure, for instance, and and, and then the the the, 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 uh, the this centre goes ahead. So let me let me do this, and I want to show you the um, what I mean about the first point: delegating it to uh, um, delegating the fighting to outside people. Well, if I if I show you this again from the, the Linton on News Action Group, if I go to the bottom. Uh, legal challenges. Hamilton District Council is exploring an injunction on the basis of planning. Well, okay, that's, that's still in the pipeline. They're taking advice on it as far as I'm aware. Villagers are working closely with refugee charities. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Wrong answer. With a view to ensuring that the Home Office meets all of its responsibilities towards asylum seekers and will ensure legal challenges where needed. I, I don't know what that like. Who's going to ensure legal challenges? The, the Home Office of Villages will ensure legal challenges. Are they getting out the money to do that? I don't, I'm not aware that, that they are briefing people to fight this campaign. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. that They might have briefed a, a, a team of lawyers to, to um, fight this case. I'm not aware of it. Okay, and I think they would have said it if, if, they, if they were doing it, if they got that money together. So what it looks like to me is that they are um, relying on Hamilton District Council to pursue the legal case. And if I go to this, this next story, that's a BBC. This shows, I think, uh, if I'm right that they're, that they're not taking on the fight themselves, that they're getting other people to do the fighting, that shows a dependent streak, and that is dangerous when you're when you're in a, in a war like this. Linton on news, civil servants booed at asylum centre meeting. You don't win by booing civil servants. You don't get anywhere. Those civil servants are sent there to be Aunt Sally's to get booed at. This was a parish council meeting. And th 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 those are the people there. Home office officials were booed when they met with villagers opposing plans to use a former RAF base to house hundreds of male uh, asylum seekers. The government intends to use the site of Linton on News, New York, etc., to house up to uh, 1,500 people with 60 set to arrive before the end of the month. On Thursday, senior civil servants were questioned for two hours by residents. Um, it was announced Pretty Patel will meet with residents. It's madness, etc., etc. They've not been to this village and looked at the airbase and seen where where it's been based and seen how the village is so close to the airbase. Okay, that's this is this is not a good sign. Here they are. That I think this is the same meeting on the uh, the Sky the Sky News report. They look like a decent bunch of people to me. I I think I'd get on well if they didn't know who I was. I think they'd, they'd get on fine with me, but. This is this is an example of not really showing the fighting quality you need. If, if it's just booing civil servants and waiting for the council to do it, that's not enough. So, all right, what what are they doing? Okay, the next page on Linton on News Action Group. Kevin Holland Rake, uh, he is the uh, um, he's the MP for the area. Letter for action for judicial review will be issued very shortly. And uh, following the community meeting on Saturday, along with Councillor Wilkinson of the Council, uh, Commissioner Zoe Fire and Police Commissioner Zoe Metcalf and Chief Inspector David Hunter, I am hopeful a letter for action, I think it means a letter before action, for judicial review will be issued very shortly. Uh, as many constituents will be aware, I have also secured an adjournment debate tomorrow evening, etc., etc. So he's, he's really fighting tooth and nail. That's what he wants him to know. Look what I'm doing for you. I have, I have further meetings this week with the Home Office pressing and he's going to press, now, now listen to this, pressing for mitigations such as 24-7 policing, CCTV in the village, along with other measures. Now, 
do you want this one well, do you want is that the way that you are going to stop this being built by saying we need if this if this is to come into place we need 24 7 uh, policing and cctv and other measures no you invite the home office to say yes you're quite right thank you very much we will increase police patrols and lots of cctv cameras and now it's opening OK, constituents can watch the debate. Again, he's going on about his debate that he's, he's arranged, basically showing how he's uh, fighting uh, until his last breath. OK, so that is um, that that is what they're reporting is going to be happening. Now, if I can bring up, bring up what is this about um, the council fighting an injunction? Well, um, th 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 there seem to be, from what I can tell, th there are two things. Firstly, they're saying that the Home Office uh, didn't uh, uh, consider properly before it identified this site. I think that is a weak case. You don't have many sites that you can rapidly convert towards a, an asylum centre. Uh, a barracks is an obvious place because it's used to housing young uh, fighting age males and that's those are the people who will be housed at this, this asylum centre. So I think that's a weak case. And also they sent civil servants to the parish council room to talk to them. Pretty Patel might go there. They might have a nose around. And that's basically a way of covering their tracks and saying, yes, we've considered properly. Uh, the other one, the other, the, other, the other method is to try uh, to go for judicial review to say that the Home Office need to apply for planning permission uh, on this site. That is the one to go for. And if I explain a little bit about it, here's what uh, Councillor... Um, uh, what's the name of this fellow? Councillor Wilkinson. And what he said, that just this, this last paragraph there, Hambleton is the planning authority. This is just to, just to explain it. Hambleton is the planning authority. We normally would expect a planning application for change of use to come through and we, and we could prevent things through the planning process. Unfortunately, the Home Office are exploring something called a Class Q. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. That's class Q of uh, permitted development, things you can do without planning permission, which is a development permitted during an emergency. And we could get into debate about what an emergency was, which means that they could grant themselves permission for an initial 12 months, no, six months, in terms of change of use from an RAF base into an asylum centre. And after that, they could regularise that. And I don't think the planning process would be able to prevent that. So really strident fighting talk from that councillor. Yeah. Can you see why I, why I think it's a mistake to delegate your war to someone else? He, he is not showing there, in that soundbite, that quote, he is not showing the fighting qualities necessary. I don't think the planning process would be able to prevent that. I think what he's saying is they could get it for a short while under permitted development and, they, and then they could say we've done it for six months without planning permission now we have to have planning permission for it grant us planning permission no no, no just because you've done something without planning permission doesn't mean you should automatically have it try building a garage in your front garden without planning permission and let me know if they or, or try building a, a um a bed in a shed in your back garden and, and and without planning permission and see what the council do about it. They'll say, no, it doesn't matter. You've been doing this for six months. You've still got to apply for planning permission. OK, so what, what is this class Q? Just to explain, because this is the, uh, the basis, this is the legal basis that the council are using. All right, now that's the uh, legislation.gov. Let me go back to there, if you can see that. Now, class Q development by the crown relating to an emergency and it's permitted development that means it's permitted without the need to apply for planning permission development is permitted if it's by or on behalf of the crown on crown land so only the government can do it on its own land for the purposes of preventing an emergency reducing controlling or mitigating the effects of an emergency or taking other action in connection with an emergency now and um, what they're saying is that this is an emergency. No, notice they're saying that um, the, the, the invasion or this aspect of the invasion is an emergency. They're not normally saying that. They're not, normally it's wonderful, let them come in, more the better. And they ramp up the numbers very high. I think last year the number of people who were granted um, uh, the right to remain here was about 930,000. 30, so I don't think the emergency is the number of people coming in. I think the emergency is about the condition of the migrants. That is the basis for the government, the Home Office, wanting this asylum centre. Now, there is one condition here, 
uh, development permitted by, by Class Q is subject to the following conditions. Basically, um, you can only do it for six months and then you've got to return the site to what it was before. On or before the expiry of the period of six months, beginning with the date on which the development began, any use of the land for a purpose of Class Q ceases and any buildings, etc., etc., by Class Q are removed and the land is restored, re restored to its condition before the development took place. Now, let me... Just go down there. Interpretation of Class Q. What is an emergency? Uh, uh, an emergency means an event or situation which threatens serious damage to human welfare, environment, the environment, or the security. I don't think they, that it's any of the latter two. I think it's human welfare. I think it's the human welfare of the migrants. For the purposes of subparagraph uh, one, one a, uh, an event or situation that threatens damage to human welfare only if it involves or causes or may cause loss of human life, human illness or injury, homelessness. I think it's about homelessness for migrants. That's why they want it. So the, the, the very um, the, the purpose of this is it, the interest of the migrants. That's why, really, I think, the legal justification for it. And, uh, and that's why it is really a mistake for the Linton on News campaign group, as they're doing here, to focus so heavily on concern for asylum seekers because I think that plays into government hands. You can see they're playing into government hands in other ways. I'm not saying they will lose, but it's a very bad marker. Okay, so that's that's my point. It's dangerous to delegate the fight to other people and if you are to, to delegate the fight to other people, it needs to be people who share your incentive and I don't think the council do. I don't think they've got the fighting qualities. I think council simply want to avoid problem problems frequently it's to avoid work because there, there are some people at the councils who are a little bit lazy and some people are just working for a nice gold plated pension at the end of it so they're not going to have the same vim and vigor to achieve the hardcore victory that people on linton or news need what they need what people in linton or news need to do is to scare up the money tens of thousands it will be in order to hire someone who will fight this for them aggressively and with focus and just keep on fighting and, and maintain the fight with stamina. And if you think that's a plug for me, no, I'm quite certain the people of Link, the good people of Linton on News would run out of the room holding their noses if I turned up offering to help them. I don't think they would want anything to do with me. It can be some, and they haven't asked me, and if they did ask me, I think they'd expect me to do it for nothing, and I don't have the time. So this is a serious, a, a long old job. Uh, and so, but they need to get up there. If this is serious to you, if you really think your house prices are going to uh, drop to nothing, which I think is very likely after a few years, then you need to prevent that and put, put together the money now and make a, create a fight, fight this battle yourself. Then you will embarrass the council into putting up a decent fight itself. You will embarrass Parliament. You will create focus and respect and admiration for the vim and vigour that you are showing from across the country. If you keep saying, oh, it's, it's, it's not our welfare, it's not the welfare of the video, it, it's really the asylum seekers we're concerned about, you're not going to get any of that. You're not going to impress the enemy. They're going to know... They're going to know that you're not as strong as you should be and you're not going to get people around the country respecting uh, uh, your, your, um, your get up and go. Okay, so who else? So that's the council. I don't think they have the, uh, the vim and vigour. What about the other man, the MP, who is being, uh, they're relying on to fight this? Well, who is the MP? There he, oh God, would you, would you want this man fighting your war? Okay, that is Kevin Holland Rake. He's been the MP since the dim and distant past, since 2015. Okay, now um, I'll, I'll show you. I don't think he is. I, I don't think he is the man for this. And I want to I'll bring up a little video to show you. Now this is on the uh, the Mark Stein show on GB News. Okay, if I do that, and then. So um, I, I think the Home Office is kind of pretty pretty far. Well, let me just turn the volume a bit. Hold on. Are the mark in terms of understanding the, uh, the what will happen when these 1,500 young single men move into the centre of a small rural village in North Yorkshire and will be bored out of their minds most of the time and will have other things to do and that's a real concern for many people in this news 
Clearly, most of these people will be law-abiding, decent people. No, but some won't. won't, and that's a real worry to these residents. And the Home Office, effectively, is making the village the sacrificial lambs for a national policy. It's absolutely wrong, and I will oppose it uh, with every breath in my body. I'll play it again. Absolutely. The Home Office, effectively, is making the village the sacrificial lambs for a national policy. It's absolutely wrong, and I will oppose it uh, with every breath in my body. You hear that? He's, he's making it loud and clear. He'll oppose it with every breath in his body. That is the answer. This guy may be a decent guy, but an MP's incentive is to show precisely that, that he's fighting for you with every breath in his body, not to win. It, it doesn't matter all that much to an MP what happens, or whether a case like this is won or lost. What matters is that he gets voted in onto the gravy train again. I, I'm not trying to cast aspersions on this guy. I'm saying he has a different, a very different incentive. He doesn't have the incentive to achieve the raw victory. That's what matters to the people of Linton on News. Either you win or you lose. Nothing else is going to matter here. And I have to go back to, to what he said, this bit that I, that I, I pointed out previously. Uh, I have further meetings this week with the Home Office pressing for mitigations such as 24-7 policing, CCTV in the village, along with other measures. That That is a bad sign if that's what he considers fighting with every breath in his body. That likes, that sounds to me like he's looking to compromise. And if, if I go, the more I Google around, the more I find these... Um, this this urge to compromise from uh, Kevin Holland Rake, the, the MP. Now, I, I don't know if he's getting misquoted because it doesn't do him any favours. But uh, th this from the Northern Echo: Asylum seekers will not be housed at RAF Linton or News until safe, says MP. Well, uh, <laughs> he's assuring them that. But basically, that 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 sounds like um, that MP saying that they will be housed there but steps will be taken to make it safe. W what steps? How are you going to prevent those fighting age males, m most of whom will be Muslim and therefore motivated by a very bellicose hostility towards non-Muslims, including the, the written injunction uh, uh, to, to engage in sexual aggression, uh, sexual sex slavery, which is why, why rape is so common has been so common uh, a feature of the migrant crisis since, well, decades, but certainly since 2015. Now, um, uh, there's this quote in, the, in this report. In reply, Mr. Hollenrake confirmed that only once planning, legal requirements and safety was in place would they make a, a formal decision on the proposal. It sounds like he's trying to soften up people for uh, 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 the centre to go in, but with uh, some uh, amelioration measures. And uh, that means losing. OK, so let me go to the next story. If you don't believe me, if you think that he's an impressive figure and you'd be happy to have him fight every battle for you, well, then uh, the Yorkshire Post don't agree with you. With you. They agree with me. Uh, Linton on whose villages have been ignored over asylum centre plan, the Yorkshire Post says. So let me just go down a bit. Um, Conservative MP for Thurscombe Moulton, Kevin Hollenrakes, uh, has opposed that outright, saying it will devastate the community, it will devastate house prices. No, don't go on about house prices. It's the wrong argument. That'll get thrown out of the window. His intervention has clearly not dented the resolve of ministers. This is according to the Yorkshire Post which begs the question, what is the point of a constituency MP if they have expressed the views of locals only to be shrugged off? So if you think I'm being hard on him, the Yorkshire Post is saying, we might as well not have an MP if that's all you can do. And well, I think that's a reasonable point of view. But hold on, I hear you cry as with one voice. Maybe he's right. Maybe th these plans will be put on hold until until uh, 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 until the site is made safe. Well, then, let's look at the ne next story, which came out on the 15th of June. Plans for Linton on News Asylum Centre on hold until site made safe. Now, this was um, put out as uh, it was reported by, by some outlets that I saw as saying that the plans have been suspended, which which they hadn't. But uh, um, uh, uh, the Home Office Minister for Safe and legal migration. Kevin Foster MP has confirmed that safe and legal. My God, I mean, 
how can he look at himself? How can he? How can he? How can he bear that title with, with a straight face? How can the ink stick on his name badge when he has that title on it? Honestly, uh, has confirmed that the site will not accommodate asylum seekers until it is deemed to be safe and conforms to all legal requirements, including planning. Okay, that's basically saying yeah, we'll go through a lot of hoops, and um, but this will go ahead. I think that, that that's what he's saying. So get ready. And if you think that, you'd be right, because although you see in that story, they're saying that the plans are on hold until the site is made safe. The next story, two days later, on the 17th of June, recruitment is underway for Linton on Ooze Asylum Centre staff. So they're saying plans are on hold, but then they're recruiting people. You don't recruit people and start shelling out salaries and entering into contracts if you've put your plans on hold. I mean, you get a building extension and then you change your mind you think mm, shall I do it shall I not you go to the builder and say actually I want to call this off for a while I might not be briefing you to do the building you don't start handing over money for something you don't intend to build so um, that uh, eventually the contractor aims to have around 100 people on the base including security catering welfare and support teams it also seeks a full-time activity activity coordinator i shudder to think what that will be paying 27 and a half grand a year and just to uh, just to uh, substantiate this just to source this here is the advert adzuna i never knew this web, about this website activity coordinate coordinator circo they are looking for, uh, for this coordinator in linton the operations team is at the heart of, of the contract success, providing a large asylum centre on behalf of UKVI at, uh, at Linton. The department will be responsible, etc. The activity uh, coordinator is responsible for a proactive engagement with staff and residents to develop an activity timetable, blah de blah I'll leave you to, to read the rest of this, but that's Adzuna, activity coordinator in Linton. Okay, it's, it's actually it's kind of funny to read what his responsibilities will be, but I, I don't have time to bore you with that it's not that funny that it's unmissable okay so this then comes back to this ties in and this is why i think people within linton on ooze are playing into the uh, um the hands of the home office because they are echoing uh, that th they are echoing the concerns that the home office say that they have about um, how nice this will be for asylum seekers and um, you are sh you are showing common ground with the government's plans and that is an open invitation for the, the government to come to you and say yes we have common ground let's let it go ahead but we promise you we'll do it nicely no wrong answer that way you lose but surely i hear you cry the people of linton on ooze they're not they're not sitting back and and letting it all happen they're not saying that they're happy with migrants coming into their village surely they don't want it at least that, that they're they're talking a better game aren't they even if they're not even if they're delegating the battle to uh, the council and the mps the mp well let's see what they're doing i'll bring up um, let me bring up the next story this is a, a daily mail story um, it's quite a long way up i have to go hold on that uh, that's it's the wrong plan in the wrong place furious residents say they fear for their safety amid outrage over pretty patel's guantanamo on whose plan to house 1500 asylum seekers in sleepy yorkshire village okay now that sounds like strong stuff until you get to down into the meat of it into the into what they're actually saying now uh, this this lady um olga matthias um spokesperson representing residents of uh, Linton on Ooze, who are opposed to the proposed Asylum Seekers Reception Centre, poses for a portrait on Main Street in the village of Linton on Ooze, near York in northern England. Um, on hold on, what's that? On May the fourth, uh, twenty twenty. Uh, Olga Matthias, spokesman representing residents of Linton on Ooze, who, who, who are opposed to the proposed Asylum Seeker Reception Centre, said. 1,500 people in the village of 700 seems to have an absence of proportionality. Okay, so absence of proportionality, that is not your fighting slogan. You can you, you invite the, the government to uh, address measures which will ameliorate that uh, absence of proportionality. What is proportionality in terms of a new asylum centre? I don't know what proportionality is. I've no idea. I'm sure nobody else does. I'm sure no judge does. 
while another villager, th this paragraph is good, while another villager, another villager, Steve, 43, and Olga say they back the idea of housing refugees in their village, they can understand why the Home Office, sorry, they can't, they cannot understand why the Home Office chose to send such a large number to Linton on Ouse. So they back the idea of housing refugees in their village. So, so do, you want, do you want the asylum centre or not? Do you want refugees housing your village or not? Is it that you want this place to be converted, but you just don't want 1,500? You want if uh, the 600 that you say uh, the, 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 this, this RAF base was designed to house would that be okay is that what you're saying because if you say that it'll quickly get extended and expanded again that they'll build more units and oh now it can now it can accommodate the 1500 uh, uh, which we always thought it could uh, and um it's a lose-lose scenario says steve they have a right for a peaceful life especially after the countries these people are coming from so they have the right to be here. No, no, they don't. They've come from France. No, you don't specify a destination when you're fleeing persecution. You just get out un from under the boot of the nearest despot to anywhere that will have you. Th there was not a, 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 a fear of a well-founded fear of persecution in France. So uh, no, no, they don't have a right to be here. So th th this is, they're saying they've got a right to be here and they back the idea of, of a centre in there. Now, this lady, she is reported by the Daily Mail or Olga Mathias as a spokesperson representing residents on Linton on Ouse. So she, they call her a spokesperson. And that photograph says she is a spokesperson and she posed for that photograph. So it's probably fair, well, fair to, to, to say that she is a spokesperson unless that's a whole pack of lies from the, uh, the Daily Mail. Okay, so what do the uh, Linton? What else do the Linton on Ooze group say about themselves? Well, they have a Twitter page. That's this group, the Linton on Ooze Action Group, uh, campaign against the Home Office Office's proposed asylum reception centre at Linton on Ooze, media inquiries, etc., etc. That I think is um, the a picture from the uh, BBC page that I showed you earlier, where they booed the civil servants. I think that's the same date. I could be wrong about that. But who are they posting tweets from? Well, uh, the second one down is a retweet from Zoe Gardner. Zoe Gardner, regardless of the outcome today in the High Court, this is her referring to the Rwanda plan, the plan to, to send uh, migrants over to Rwanda for processing, which she opposes. Regardless of the outcome today in the High Court, a decent, decent people all over the UK know that, well, I'm not decent. No, the plan to send refugees to Rwanda is sadistic, racist and inhumane. Well, she's not sugarcoating it there. A vile attempt to crush the hopes of people who have lost everything, all to distract us from the PM's lies and failures. You can't say that. That's racist. That's sadistic. OK, so who is this lady, Zoe Gardner, that the Linton on Ooze Action Group are retweeting? Well, here's Zoe Gardner's page. Okay. Zoe Gardner, Zoe Jardinier. Oh, that's sophistic a sophisticated lady. Right, well, maybe not when you hear what she's got to say about herself. UK and EU refugees and migration. Full stop. First line. That's what she's about. UK and EU refugees and migration. Feminism. Alphabet plus. A generalised, incoherent and generalised rant, generalised incoherent ranting to boot. You don't say. Drinks, shower, water. I shudder to think. Okay, policy and advocacy, and that is the uh, Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants, an independent national charity fighting for justice in immigration, asylum, and nationality law in the UK since 1967. Blah de blah de. Okay, and she carries on like that. For instance. Um, she talks about a plan to send a Sudanese fella out to Rwanda. Well, same continent, but uh, this is simply and wholly unacceptable. Who will speak out against this? Well, you will rant incoherently about it, apparently. Now, she has her own um, YouTube YouTube site, YouTube page. Let's let's go to that. Now, on if I go back to uh, to a oops, let me just. That's her YouTube page, and she has a couple of shorts. I want to play this short here, and, um, well, you can judge for yourself. It's a bit less than a minute.
there are reasons why people seek to make their way to the UK. The, all the research tells us, including the Home Office's own research, that those are based on connections to the UK, to connections to the country they're trying to reach. The ways to solve that is to enter into good faith negotiations with our partners in Europe, um, to um, arrange for a system where people with those connections can travel safely, legally, to the UK. So, okay, did you hear that? So the real solution to stop small boats in the channel is to make arrangements so they can travel safely to the UK. That sounds to me like she's saying anyone with a connection to the UK should get a taxi service to the UK. Yeah, <laughs> When people say they're concerned about small boats in the channel, they're not saying they're concerned about... Primarily, they're concerned about invasion by illegal migrants. They want to stop the people coming. It's not just the rubber dinghies they're concerned about. They're concerned about the people coming here illegally. And what she... It's... it's well... I mean, set up a taxi for, service for them and then they won't be using rubber dinghies anymore. <laughs> this, this is her point of view. And this is the lady getting tweeted out by um, the Linton on News Action Group. And so we go one down there. So the next one is Spider Blue. Uh, there you go, DM fixed your mistake for you. DM said, lawyers set to ground first Rwanda flight. No, and that's crossed out. Law set to first ground first Rwanda flight. Oh, well, it must be right then. So, um, and the next one is Ripon City of Sanctuary. And, um, uh, and, and this is... Uh, the, 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 this is uh, or, uh, the article that's put forward by Ribbon City of Sanctuary. Who are they? Well, let me go to their Twitter page. Right there, Ripon City of Sanctuary, welcoming refugees and asylum seekers as one of 125 City of Sanctuary groups across the UK and are. Basically, I don't think that means Ripon is a City of Sanctuary. It means that there is a City of Sanctuary group in Ripon. And um, they're, they're, they're basically a pro um, a pro a migration group. For instance, the first one, they, they, uh, they have a quote from uh, the Bishop of Selby. Uh, Christian faith, this is from the um, the Church of England, not, not a loyal source. Uh, Christian faith impels us to work for humane treatment of vulnerable people. This, along with respect for local residents, must be central to any asi such asylum policy. So, uh, both are seriously lacking in the plans at Linton. So I think that's jumping on the bandwagon. And you notice it's the interests of the migrants that are coming first. That is not going to win you the argument. OK, and if I go down a bit more, hold on. There's uh, City of Century there. Just bear with me. And what else a rip of City of Sanctuary posting there, retweeting this from Olga Mathias. Do you remember her, that lady who, uh, back here, that lady uh, who was apparently the spokesperson representing uh, residents of Linton on Ouse, who said that um, they backed the idea of housing refugees in their village. So according to the Daily Mail, that lady, if I go to the uh, Ripon City of Sanctuary, that lady has uh, tweeted a long read, but a good one, explaining why uh, you should be grateful someone has done the basic work you should have done. Basically, I, I don't know. I don't know why she's saying that. Uh, uh, this article is from uh, Scout News. There is so much toxicity, splitting, and factionalism, and the far right has caused it. A sleepy Yorkshire village becomes a far right flashpoint. Not, not by me. I'm sure they call me far right. I'm not going. They haven't been invited to go there. Um, I don't have the time to represent them, even if they wanted to, which I'm sure they wouldn't. But if you, you can read the article yourself, it's basically it lists a whole load of um, organisations that seem far right and say, that's racist. You can't say that about our campaign. That's racist. OK. So um, a little more about uh, Ripon City of Sanctuary. R Ripon, by the way, it's the town. I think it's about... Um, 10 or 15 miles up the road from Linton on Ouse. It's about the same distance away as, as York. Um, here's an article from the York Press. Linton on Ouse asylum plan branded sens senseless by York City of Sanctuary, also by, um, uh, 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 by Ripon City of Sanctuary. Nicola David. Now, this is a name that crops up quite a bit, Nicola David. Um, I haven't found anything that says she is a, a spokesperson for, that she's been appointed a spokesperson, but she seems to be speaking about this. And it's almost, I, I get the impression 
that she is um, being allowed to speak on behalf of local people, but I, I couldn't. I, I'm I'm not certain about that. Um, Nicola David, the chair of the charity's sister organisation, uh, Ripon City of Sanctuary, added, "This is a large group of really traumatised people, not criminals. Well, I think they are actually. They are um, in breach of uh, uh, um, immigration law. I I I think they are. I don't think they're refugees. I think they're." There is no danger of, I don't think there is any well-founded fear of persecution in France. I don't think they are um, that traumatised, any more traumatised here than they would be in France. And I do think that they are, they, I think they have broken the criminal law. So let me go and see what else she says. Nicola Davis said the asylum seekers would need access to interpreters, legal advice, health and mental health care. There was little evidence of this being in place. Yet again... This is the invitation to the Home Office. Provide more facilities, particularly make it nicer for uh, the migrants in the camp. Uh, and that is how you lose. And finally, Nicola David said it was wrong to try to label asylum seekers illegal. Well, well yeah, illegal migrants are illegal. Under international law, people, people fleeing war or persecution had the right to claim asylum wherever they chose, she said, not just the first country they came to. No, no, no. If, if, you, if you are in a country where you have, if you've managed to get to a country where you have no fear of a well-founded fear of persecution, you, 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 the next country is not obliged to, to take you in. You do not specify a destination. You do not jurisdiction shop when you are fleeing persecution. You flee persecution. That's it. So, again, I... This, this, Nicola David and Ripon City of Sanctuary keep coming up, and I, I have the, I have the impression that um, the Linton on News campaign group are allowing her to speak. That there's nothing that I see that w where they've distanced themselves from her. So a little more about um, about this lady, uh, um, Nicola David. Now here, this is from Yorkshire Live. The reality of hosting a refugee from cooking together to watching The Apprentice. Yeah, yeah. All, all the, uh, the, the residents of the citizens of Germany and Austria during the migrant crisis of 2015. I think they might differ about the reality there. I think the people of Linton are news. After, if this site goes ahead within a couple of years, I think they're going to, to differ from her as well. But here she is saying basically um, how wonderful it was. I think the word she used is... Fabulous. Okay, so she th there she is. I think she's leaning up, smiling and leaning up. I won't say too much about her, but she's smiling and leaning up against a box of what looks like charity collection for migrants. Th this is in her home. It looks like a very nice home to me as well. Very nice. Uh, just outside Ripon. And oh, there she is. Another one of it. That's the same smile in her home. Nice antique. It looks like antique picture frames, antique uh, table. Smiling the smile at the camera. And... Um, uh, in 2016, Najem, that's the, uh, the uh, um, uh, asylum seeker or the migrant whom she put up, arrived on Nicola's doorstep from Syria. He initially came from a trial weekend but ended up staying for seven months. He, he actually didn't come from Syria. He'd been teaching, he was an English teacher. He'd been teaching English in uh, another Arab country. I, f I forget which one. Uh, it was brilliant. We'd sit and watch The Apprentice together and Master Chef, and he was always right. He would always call who would win. Well, wow, that's a big relief. Now, there she is in the little attic room. That's the room that the, uh, the migrant, uh, supposedly Syrian migrant, uh, slept in. Nice, nice bedroom, nicely appointed, nice chimney stack, nice big brass bedstead. Same smile from Nicola David. Um, and when the gem did cook meat, it would be halal. And if we cooked meat, we would make sure that it was halal. Okay, and we go down even further. Yet yeah, same smile, folding clothes for charity. All right. Um, she, she, well, well, and she's describing it as fabulous. Now, this is, if you were fighting, let me just, let me just do this. If you were fighting uh, a, 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 pr a proposal to have a migrant asylum centre in your village, would you want... Uh, people speaking on your behalf who are so clearly in favour of some kind of uh, asylum centre locally. Would you? Is that what you want? Just, just, just think about it. Uh, and now, you, you, the, the the impression that um, I would be wary of being too hard 
on these people, or on the people of Linton or News. I suspect that the impression you get of them is a harsh one. I suspect that the impression you have of them is that they are a bit like, or the, this Linton or News campaign group, are a bit like the mum who takes her two boys to the municipal swimming bars, gets into the pool, props herself up against the back end of the pool uh, and settles down for an hour of conversation with her pal. After five minutes, one of her little boys runs up to her and says, Mummy, I want to go wee-wee, I want to go wee-wee now. Take me to, take me to go wee-wee. I don't want to go on my own. Take me, to, take me to the toilets. And she says, oh, I've just got comfortable. I'm here chatting to my friend in the swimming bars. I don't want to take you to some dirty municipal toilet. But I want to go wee-wee. I want you to go with me. I don't want to go on my own. So she then says, OK, get your brother, both of you, go right down the other end of the pool and you both go wee-wees down the other end of the pool. But make sure you do it at the far end, the other end of the pool, from me. Okay, that is probably, my guess is, that is the impression you have of um, the Linton Onu's group. Because they seem to be saying, yeah, we want things to be nicer than they are. They are more inviting for migrants, which it's the inevitable corollary of that is you will have more migrants coming in and that seems to seems to me to be saying to be tantamount to saying what well, it to the extent that to the extent that they're saying they don't want that that center near them they're saying we don't want it near us one near us we want two somewhere else so if there's one in Cornwall one in Kent we'll be happy about that that appears to be uh, what what they're saying so I understand why you might have that impression but that impression of them being like that being like that mum in the swimming bars I think that is a false impression it's a very unfortunate impression that's being given what i what i suspect is happening is when this linton on news action group first met they said fellas the one thing we mustn't do is let people call us racist we mustn't give people the chance to call us racist that would be terrible that would be fatal that would be worse than death itself we mustn't allow ourselves to be called racist and everyone said oh yes we're not racist don't let anyone call us racist tell everyone we're not racist that's the important thing we'd rather have the center here than be called racist that's probably some of them i reckon one or two individuals probably think that way and then probably some smart alec piped up and said i know let's say let's say that the reason we're opposing this asylum center is because we're concerned about the migrants themselves. It's not that we're against the migrants, we are for the migrants. And everyone piped up and said, fantastic, great idea, boss. You always have such good ideas, fantastic. Yes, we're not against asylum seekers, we're in favor of them. Yes, we're in favor of them, good old asylum seekers, make conditions nicer for them. Yes, we're gonna pursue that line. That is what I th think likely happened, probably not as crudely as that, but that is, those are the fears that were going through their mind. No, you don't do that. If you're going to get called racist, you ignore it and you keep fighting. You don't let up. You don't let it distract you. As I said, you send the dogs in, you, you go for the weak point, you bite and you keep the pressure up and you maintain your stamina. And if you, show, if you telegraph weakness to the other side, the other side will use it, which is what I expect will happen in, in, in this case. So it all looks pretty dismal. It looks like a dismal tale. I'm not saying they're loose. The council are talking about launching uh, judicial review proceedings. Now, the, 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 and that might win. The judicial review proceedings that I would advise, if I were brief, which I'm, I'm not, and I'm, I'm sure I never will be, or at the moment, without having looked further at the case, what I, what I would advise is you say that the, the council should have applied for planning permission and that its decision to grant itself uh, um, or to develop the site under those Class Q uh, permitted development rights. Remember those Class Q um, PD rights that, that came up uh, um, there uh, th that I was talking about? That, that what, what you do is, uh, what you say to, to the, the legal argument that, that you make is that they only did that, they only took advantage of that Class Q permitted development right because they wanted to avoid applying for planning permission that they knew they wouldn't get. And therefore, they didn't consider properly when they made that decision to open that asylum centre. And therefore, they should be forced to make a planning application. That's basically, some, along those lines, that's the argument that, uh, uh, that I would make. 
not not that I'm concerned it will be harmful for migrants and not trying to, to say that, that uh, you, you're anti-racist. So, but anyway, th this is a dismal story. It is a dismal tale. It is depressing. Why do I think it means that we're going to win in the long run? Why do I think it means that we're going to win hands down? Well, even though the people of Linton on ooze may lose hands down, the reason I think we will win hands down is because of the attitudes they're displaying. On the one hand, what they're saying is uh, we don't want this asylum centre here in our village. No way. And if you were to ask anyone, do you want this asylum centre here? Yes or no? I think everyone would say, no, we don't want it. Um, and if we have any choice in, it, in the matter, we won't have it. And the other side is uh, uh, the, 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 the side that we express, uh, us, the, 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 the biting uh, social uh, self-consciousness and vanity, the desire for social approval that we have, that it gets expressed when we vote at national level, when we vote for the state authority. Uh, and, and that is the desire to think of ourselves as a good person, to think of ourselves as complying with uh, uh, the, the fashionable trend in ideology. We have the right opinions. We are nice people. We are certainly not tainted with the current form, uh, uh, the current generally accepted um, original sin, which is racism. Well, no, we've got nothing to do with that. I'm a good person, me. I think of myself as a good person, and I'm right to think of myself as a good person because other people think of me as a good person because I have nice opinions. And that gets expressed uh, at national elections because you have the power to vote of what, about what happens along uh, at the other side of the country. And most people... They care much more about their opinion of themselves and their ability to conform to current opinion than they do about what happens to you. Now, that, those are the two um, um, strands of opinion getting expressed, what people want for themselves and what they want to say about themselves when they're waxing social, they're, 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 they're giving off their, their airy opinions. Those are two different things. If the state breaks down as I think is unavoidable, then one of those, the, the, the second one of those, will just fall off a cliff, it will fall away. If the state breaks down, you don't have elections for a state authority because you don't have a state authority. And then you are simply left with people deciding for themselves as individuals, clubbing together as individuals, voting with their feet to, to decide what happens for themselves in their own area. I want to, I want to describe that. Uh, um, I think the state authority is going to break down. I think that is unavoidable. It could break down simply through the pressure of parasitic mass migration. I think it's much more likely to break down through, uh, as a result of economic causes that we've created, particularly the weight of debt throughout the economy and government debt. And if you get a big economic breakdown, the welfare state will break down and, and the state will go broke. And a state that goes broken that can no longer uh, provide uh, welfare, that it will cease to command any allegiance from the citizens because the reason for the state these days is for the welfare and economic management that it provides. And if the state doesn't have the money to enforce its will and has a loyalty from the citizens, it just collapses. It will not be there anymore. I think that is what will happen. Then what I think you get is the threat of chaos, the threat of crime. If you have that, people need law. People are going to say, my God, there's a lot of crime around. What shall I do about it? Well, how about we have a set of uh, rules that say you can do this or you can't do that? Rules that mean if you do something, you get punished. What do we call it? Uh, law. Yeah, that's law. So yes, let's have a set of laws. And we need someone to make sure that everyone sticks to those laws. Someone with a funny hat and a big stick down his trousers who drags people away if they break those laws. Or yeah, a policeman. Yeah. And we, and we need somewhere for that policeman to put people who break those laws uh, maybe a big building made of stone and brick with uh, bars at the front oh I know a jail so people will construct law but at, like a club like people joining a club voting with their feet to club together uh, to rule uh, to, 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 to submit to rules that they like that serve them so that people can carry on living safely and to continue uh, and, con uh, and so they can c continue to trade now and when that happens 
the only power you have is to vote. You don't have power to vote on what happens at the other end of the country. You don't have power to air your fancy social conscience, your beautiful ideals, and to say how you're committed to this, that, and the other, and to, to rant incoherently like that lady from um, uh, the, 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 the refugee organisation that I just quoted from. You, you only have the power to, to, to vote with your feet uh, concerning what happens to you. And when people make decisions for themselves off their own bat, people make very hard-headed, clear-headed, clear-eyed, rational, sensible decisions. And that is, uh, um, when we are simply left to that, what you'll get is no one anywhere will allow a migrant asylum centre near them. Linton on News will say, no, we're not having it here. Cornwall will say, no, we don't want it. We're not having it here. I don't care if someone else wants it. You're welcome to it. We're not having it here. Kent will say, we're not having it here. Newcastle, the Lake District, Wales. No, everyone will say, no, we're just not having it here. And by the way, we don't want those migrants and asylum seekers. They're nothing but trouble. Why do we want them here? We have a nice time amongst ourselves. We like being cohesive. We like clubbing together. And th that is that is how we will win. Through, simply through people voting with their feet and saying, this is our area, we decide what happens in it, and nobody else. And you can't enforce your fancy ideals on us. When that happens, when the state breaks down and that happens, then I think we will see, uh, through the, all that, that mass of individuals' uh, 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 decision, decisions being made by people about their own individual lives, we will see, in effect, an earthquake followed by a landslide in general um, public opinion, in, in, in the, 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 co the collective opinion. And that is how I think we will win. I think we will win, if not 100%, something like 99%. And you can see that in this Linton on News decision. If they simply had power to say, what do we, living in Linton on News, what, what do we want here, what are we going... What are we going to allow? They'd say, well, we're not going to allow this centre here, full stop. They wouldn't say, but we think someone else should have one and someone else, someone else should have another one because they'd have no power. If they don't have the power to do that, they simply focus on what's good for them and, uh, and that is, uh, and they, that they, would, they would decide what they want, which is not this centre here. That is how I think we are going to win. And I think you can see it in this dismal tale of Linton Onus. Thank you.